A very warm welcome to this video on how to get a job as a Python developer. The job of Python developer is one of the most sought after in the market right now. And for that very reason, it might not be that simple to land this job. So in today's video, I'll give you 12 tips on how you can land this job. So let's begin. Tip number one, build your own GitHub repository. So go on GitHub, create a repository and add all your files, all your Python codes on there. So it doesn't matter if it's a big project or some small piece of code where you just took some input and made some manipulations, displayed it. Every work counts. Learn a bit of GitHub version control. So not only do you upload your file once, but you can make modifications to them, rework on them, make it better, upload it again, showing your progress. Now this GitHub repository basically becomes your resume as a Python developer. The recruiters can look directly on here instead of you sending them zip files or even Jupyter notebooks. Everything is now available available online and they can access it from anywhere through any machine. So this really shows that you're not just writing code for yourself, but you want to share this with other people. And that's very important. Tip number two, make sure that your code is readable. So when you're putting your code out in GitHub, as I mentioned previously, you're writing this code, not just for yourself. So if people want to learn from your code, they want to view your code, it's necessary that they understand this code. And of course, there are a few guidelines to follow, which makes your code more readable. The most important one being you follow the PEP8 style guideline in case of Python. So the PEP8 style guideline is basically some conventions that you use and that mainly talks about indentation. So in case of PEP8, you have a four space indentation, tabs and spaces, there's maximum line length, which in case of PEP8 is 79 characters per line. The line breaks that you need to put blank lines, for example, every major class or every major function needs to be separated by two lines, two blank lines. The source file encoding, string quotes, white spaces, in expression, trailing commas, naming conventions, and so on. So again, very basic thing, if you're having a variable, make sure the variable name shows what the variable stores, what it is used for, and it's not just some big names such as var1, var2, and so on. Tip number three, create a good documentation. Again, this helps with the readability and the understandability of the code. So one of the main things with creating a good documentation is having a readme file in your GitHub repository. The readme file should contain details regarding your project, what your project does, the various libraries used in your project and so on. So this is a great help to anyone who is trying to learn from your code or implement them in a different way. Now here we have a screenshot of the readme file created by Raymond Hettinger. It's present in his GitHub repository. Now, who is Raymond Hettinger? Well, that brings us to our fourth point. Raymond Hettinger, like another guy, Kenneth Reeds, these are some of the very popular personalities on GitHub. They have a very unique style and a very neat and organized style of coding. And one of the great ways to develop your own coding skill is to look at other people's code. Now, when you're looking at other people's code, it's important to remember that you look at code which is of your own skill level. So if you're an intermediate coder, make sure you look at someone's GitHub repository who again codes on the intermediate level so that you're able to connect with that code. You could probably write the same code, but he or she writes it in a better manner. Now, these are some of the people who have great GitHub repositories. You can definitely learn a lot from them. Tip number five, read books on Python coding. So you might know already quite a bit of Python. In fact, if you're looking for a Python developer job, there's a good chance that you are an advanced coder. Order, but nothing beats books. Here are some of the very popular and well-renowned books for Python. Fluent Python, Automate the Boring Stuffs with Python and so on. Now Fluent Python is a great book to start with. What it does, it just not, what it does is it gets your Python concepts really strong. So now you'll have not only great skills but also the perfect way to portray these skills. Tip number six, grow your Python skill set. Of course you can never stop learning, keep learning and some of the very important things when you go for a Python developer job is to make sure that you know how to work with some of these Python libraries. In fact, make sure that while you can cover most of these libraries, there are certain ones that you have completely mastered. Some of the very popular libraries with Python are NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, TensorFlow and so on. So learn these, master them, create projects around them and finally put these all up on GitHub for everyone to view. Tip number seven, it's never enough to just know a 
language. You must know how to apply it. And with Python, some of its most important and popular applications are in the field of AI, machine learning and data science. So master AI and machine learning with Python. Learn the various algorithms that these fields use and implement projects on them. As you can see here, we have two of the algorithms with machine learning. That's linear regression, k-means clustering. Neural networks is an algorithm used with deep learning. So make sure you have some of these applications up there in your repository. This displays your skill not only in Python, but also in other fields. And both of these going hand in hand just increases your value. Tip number eight, take freelancing projects to start off with. So, so far, I mentioned how you write your own code, you create your own projects. Now, that's not enough. Take up projects by companies. Now, these may be non-paid, they may be really low paid. Does not matter as long as you have something to show off. So, you have a project under your belt that really pays off. Now, some of the websites you can go to for freelancing works are Freelancer, Upwork, Twago, Truelancer.com and so on. So, this really shows to the recruiter that this person did not just learn Python, but he or she is always looking at how to implement them, how to use them. Tip number nine, make open source contributions. So you have your own GitHub repository. That's great. But now look into others repositories. See if there's some value that you can add. And if you can, definitely go for it. This shows not only your skill, but also that you're a team player. You want to add value to work that is already existing. And that is a skill that's again really valued in organizations. So some of the popular ones include PIP ENV, which is the Python development workflow for humans. There's also Chatistics, where you can convert your messenger and hangout chat logs into data frames. Then you can solve your traveling salesman problems using self-organizing maps. And there's also a Python to BPF converter. So these are great places to make your contributions. In fact, we have the links for some of these in the description below. So please check them out. Tip number 10, start a blog and talk about what you have learned. So having your own personal blog will add a lot of credibility to your profile. In your blog, you can definitely mention where you started off from. That is at a beginner level, what all did you know? How you took on your journey to where you are now? What materials you used to collect information and what projects you took on? How you went about this? Mention any papers you wrote and so on. All this again becomes another profile for you. The recruiters can have a quick look at your personal blog and have a good idea of what kind of a learner you are, what kind of a coder you are. And if you have done everything right, this could create a great impression on the recruiters. And if you have done everything right, this will create a great mark on the recruiters. So here's a screenshot on Ned Bachelor's blog on Python. It'll give you a good idea as to how to create a blog and how to go about it. So please check that out. So here's a list of all his blog posts. He has 227 blogs just for Python and he writes on various topics. For example, here we have a screenshot of is Python interpreted or compiled. In fact, you can even include some of your personal views on Python on the learning process or the learning curve of Python and so on. Tip number 11, follow a daily schedule for practice. So just because you think you have mastered the language, do not put it aside and let it collect dust. Take out some time every day write code whether small or big make sure that every aspect of python is at your fingertips and finally tip number 12 keep your resume and profile updated on job portals such as linkedin indeed glassdoor and career builder look out for python developer job roles on these sites and google jobs simply hire dice and more a recently updated resume always captures the eye of the recruiter so these are some of the tips you can follow to back that python developer developer's job. If you're new to Python and require some help in gaining the skills to attain that job of a Python developer, you have come to the right place. Just go to our website simplylearn.com and in here we have just the course for you. In fact, we have a number of courses for Python, but you can start off here with Python training course. This course covers everything A to Z for Python and it's pretty much all you require to get that job. So before you take up the course, you can definitely go through everything that it covers, the objectives, who should take up this course, the prerequisites, what projects are covered under the course and also the subheadings of the various topics covered. So I hope this video was helpful. If yes, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. All the best and see you all next time. 
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.